old man on a bench. Okay, today is July 10th, 2021. We are heading for the Bighorn Mountains, but first we decided we would stop at the Crazy Woman Territory Store. This is the coolest store ever. Checking out the shirts. Which she already has one on, which we bought last week when we came here with diehard fan Patty Blakesley. After we're done, we're gonna go up to the Thai Club. Yep. Come along for the ride. Love it. Love it, love it. Crazy woman on the back. Yeah. So we have our new hats and our new shirts. We just love the Crazy Woman store. My new necklace. I like this. I like the stretchiness of the necklace. I do too. I'm trying to decide if it's my hat that's crooked or my head. <laughs> I think it's my head. We're heading up to see the Thai flume that's by Tongue River. Back in 1899, they had a big fire up there. By then, they had been cutting trees for about seven years. And the women and children actually went down the flume which would, I don't know about you, but I'd be pretty afraid going down the flume. The but flume, none of the kids or women got killed. But they had to climb down the flume and the flume went over canyons and went, was as high as three to 400 feet in places. Not only that, but in some places, the flume burned leaving gaps where they had to climb over with their children. I think that would have been terrifying. I probably would have been stuck holding up the line, screaming in terror. So we're over here by Dead Sweet Campground. Apparently, one of these loggers for the Thai flume quit his job, went down, blew all his money, alcohol and all that. Came back up, tried to get laudanum from the doctor at the camp. They told him no, so he went and killed himself with a double bit ax. Really? And he's buried at that campground, apparently. Huh. He was a Swede. I think his name was Hunt. Hunt? So that's why it's dead sweet. So this is the East Fork of the South Tongue River. We're at the Splash Dam interpretive site. That's the Splash Dam. I think basically what they were doing is backing up a lot of water and then flooding it out. Down, yeah. down to the Tongue River. They must have had somebody walk up and down. They did. Yeah. They think that they would get against the rocks. They did. They had people walking down. <laughs> they called them river rats. Yeah. You know? When they were logging, the river rats would come along and follow the flume to make sure that everything was okay, that there were no log jams on the flume.
we're heading for West Fork Big Goose Creek where these guys are going to do some fishing and hope to catch their lunch. We're going to go clear our way back in there. You don't probably don't want to go back here unless you have a jeep or a side-by-side -side or something like that. I found your stash. Gonna have me one. Hey, Elgin, Elgin, look at us. Make a funny face, okay? Oh, that's a, hey, no, really, I want a good one. That's a funny face. Yikes. Sorry. That's fine. I'm trying to take the best route. At least it's not a boulder field. Wait, are we heading to a boulder field? Yeah. I won't be driving then. That didn't sound good. No. He was saying, have we ever been down here? And we said, no, you guys have. And he said, well, wherever it splits, it's nasty, nasty, nasty. You can turn around there.
So Elgin scraped his differential and also part of his shock. He got it pretty good. Well, she was over here first. There's our jeeping guys. Yeah, I should have went through here. Yeah. I thought you were gonna get ran over. Yeah. It doesn't look as steep when you film it. But I wouldn't want to fall down that. This one, not so bad, but lots of rocks. Big Goose Creek. Wildflowers. So we bought this outback table. And we wanted to show it to you. It's perfect when you don't want to bring out a big table. And then all you have to do is lift it and shut it when you're done. Ben and Lane have an easy overland from Canada. You just pull it down. Push it back in. Nice tight fit. Close it. Ta da! Nice table. Well, we're just going to fish the river going down. Yeah, I'll just read a book here. Well, I might take some video of you fishing and then I'll read a book. We're getting ready to go fish. Heading off to fish, each to their own spot. Dan already caught a fish. He just barely got there. Guess he's going to have dinner. 
Pretty nice. Just a little. Those brickies are good tasting. Dan got another fish. Is that one a brookie? Brookie. I'm going to catch one more. Let me see your fish, Elgin. In the sunlight. Enough for dinner. That's all I wanted. Oh, they're still alive. Man, you're gonna eat good tonight. Let me get a close up. Dan is eating good. Get ready to cook dinner.
like it's that bad, but oh, that was quite the climb up here. climbed up. Woo! Earlier in the day when we were at the splash dam on the east fork of the South Tongue River, we ran into a gentleman who told us that over by the Thai Flume campground we could see remnants of the Thai Flume. So we had a little bit of time left. We decided to make tracks 25 miles back down the road and go see if we could find these remnants. We're heading out to look for the old flume remnants. They're going off to see if they can find the flume down there. And we're gonna go across the river on the other side. Oh, isn't that sweet? Yeah, if you point your camera, you can see it go all the way down. Here are some remnants of the old Thai flume. The old Tongue River Thai flume. If I come down here, there's some more. These are over a hundred years old, so there's not much left. You can see it right there. I'm walking the line of it. We're following to the South Fork of the Tongue River. We're only about 50 yards off the river. I think this was last used in 1913, but I'm not sure. And the ties would come down here at speeds of up to 80 miles an hour, the railroad ties. They needed a bunch of railroad ties to get from Sheridan up into Montana. So they would cut the ties up here by the rivers and send them down this flume, which is basically like a, a wooden ditch in the air. They'd fill it full of water and float ties down it. They were a V-shaped ditch made out of wood. And some of the guys wanted to get down to Sheridan faster. They built themselves a little boat 
and they rode this for them. Reaching speeds of up 70, 80 miles an hour. Anyway, that's kind of what's left of it. Somebody had to put that nail and pound that in a hundred years ago. Somebody pounded this. There's the bottom boards right there. See how they're cut with the oh, yeah. angle on them? Huh? Those were probably the bottom of the beat. They yeah. floated over two million uh, ties down these things. You would think with such a major undertaking of building this flume and cutting two million ties out of this forest, that they might have had some massive loss of life, but they really didn't. They had one incident in which they had set off some dynamite and the rocks started tumbling. There were six men in the way and they didn't realize that they were there when they set off the dynamite. Four of them died, one of them jumping to his death off a cliff, three of them being run over by the boulders as they came down. One was injured and one escaped. They said that somebody who was good at their job when they cut down a tree, they could do 25 ties a day. They would make a railroad tie, eight feet long and seven inches by seven inches skinning the tree and making it kind of square 25 a day per per guy subscribe to be notified of all new videos and click the bell and set to all